and we need to add furniture in somehow. And I don't want to continue modeling this from a single piece of a subd geometry. <clears throat> My voice, hello. Yeah, we'll get the voice going. I do want to start adding additional pieces, separate pieces. So we need a plan. We need some sort of a plan for this. So there are two ways of how we can do, do this. First one is just trying to mimic the, the behavior, you know, the aesthetic of the overall building. So that would be kind of chameleon based approach, you know, trying to be as, as close as possible to the language of the building. Another one would be a contrast based approach where I would add stuff that, you know, just, just like these, these frames, right? sharp, sharp edge frames that I would add and would contrast the, the curvilinear nature of the building. So. I'm kind of torn between these two. I think I will go for uh, for the contrast based, just because I'm I'm kind of tired at this point of, of doing everything in sub D. Okay, it looks bad. <laughs> it looks bad, but we will figure out some sort of a design language, some sort of a design decision. 100 mil. So my idea is that what if our shelves are not touching the ground? Huh? Huh? Cool, huh? Is there anything else we want? Uh, for now, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the shelves are kind of, kind of okay, kind of okay, kind of, kind of fine, kind of, kind of okay, fine. Looking good. Let's make a box. That box is gonna be 600 by 600 by uh, 600. Something like that. Actually, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will bring in a person in here. Um, so I kind of want to have this rotated like so. I'm blocking out the, the, the furniture piece that I'm gonna have. Maybe I, I will fillet this, fillet edge. Okay, done works, done works. Selected. Um, uh, we investigated with Arctic View. I mean, it's a chair, you know, nothing, nothing special. Uh, but I think it's gonna fit the the, the building a little bit better. As I, I wanted a very low chair, and that will sink into the ground just like the shelves sink into the ceiling. Yeah, we need to highlight... Well, we can either go go two ways with, with our design here. We either... With, with the light, I mean. We either create a light in the same fashion as we're creating the furniture. You know, contrasting things that are just sticking out of, of our blob. We either do that or we, just like you said, we highlight the contours. So we have like cuts along the, the ceiling and maybe the floor that have like just this glow. I think the cuts would be pretty cool. I kind of wanted to have like two languages at the same time, which is probably too, too many things to want, right? <laughs> Probably too many. Um, let's try like 500 intensity and color. Uh, so it goes on copper, right? I'm gonna do warm, warm color on, on top of cop copper. I think that's gonna look nice. Like double trouble. This is getting better. Bit by bit. For something like this, if you were to ask me, you know, this whole building, how much would it cost? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea because I would need a carpenter uh, to tell me 
how much is he going to charge for the framework of this building? Because by far that would be the, the most expensive part. Right? So, lights. Lights, huh? We do have a few hanging ones here, but I don't want all of them to be like these very prominent, very in-your-face lights. So I'm going to add something a little bit more calmer, something a little bit that fits better with the with the interior space and integrates. Maybe that's the better word, integrates better with the interior space. Um, so just maybe just a rail going along the ceiling that is going to shine light. Nothing too, too crazy. That should still be a pretty intense um, modeling practice. Let's try this. Just a straight line here. And let me catch that direction right there. So that's the second direction of the building. I'll just position it probably like so, something like that. We can just simply offset this one by 600 millimeters and we get our second rail, right? That is taken care of. We can get in here, right, into the interior and use Boolean difference on this, on the interior with the lights or the cutters. This is gonna take a little bit of time, it's it's a big procedure. Done. Delete that, delete that, and we successfully have made rails. Yeah, I think that's that's good enough. Let's let's render, let's see. Let's see how it how it goes. Yeah, I think that's gonna look pretty neat. I think that's gonna look pretty, pretty nice. So I have this little script here. And this little script is going to be shared with my Patreon uh, supporters. Um, just because I, I, I share my scripts with my Patreon supporters. That, that's the only way I can say thank you to them. And it's basically a cloth simulation script where you can make cloth fall onto a shape, right? Um, let's just see if it's if it's gonna work or not. Run. A bit. This is how it looks like. Then I offset the mesh and I uh, catmull clark it, right? So so I kind of subdivide it further. And we end up getting this, and this is exactly what I don't want to happen. Uh, but I think with this one, we can actually wiggle it around to make sure that it doesn't, that it looks good from one angle, right? We have a pretty decent cloth. On, on our on our chair so I kind of want to add these these cloths to, to, to give it a little bit more <clears throat> a little bit more bizarre right to make it a bit nicer <laughs> I would leave this without any furniture I want a little bit of furniture not too much though. So for instance, this is too high up, right? I will, I will try to fix it. So that's 70 in total millimeters, huh? I think that that looks okay. Well, it doesn't look okay right now, but once we Catmull Clark it... <laughs> I just see Catmull Clark it, I don't know why. 
once we do that and disable that save that close it hide that we have ourselves <clears throat> we have ourselves a bed <laughs> <laughs> 